Thank you very much for the invitation. I think it's just about time that uh, organizations like mine are also invited to, to talk to you. Um, my name is Magda Stoczkiewicz, indeed very complicated Polish name, so whoever is not Polish is not able to pronounce it correctly most of the time, no worries. And I work for an environmental NGO called Friends of the Earth Europe. It's a, a part of international network of environmental groups with an office in Brussels where we work hand in hand with Uni Europa on many subjects and where um, we also are uh, leading a group of about 32 national members uh, in Europe. I feel very honored to be invited here and to talk about changing Europe together. And I think what I want to do in the next five to seven minutes, hopefully minding of time, is to tell you that this together needs to go beyond the trade unions, needs to go beyond Union Europa, ETUC, needs to go to organizations like mine and other like-minded organizations. And I think there are various reasons for that. One of the reasons is that I do believe that the environmental issues are actually important for any and all of us. The environment we really depend on, our health, our uh, future, our survival basically depends on the environment. We may not think about it all the time, but the planetary limits we depend on are going to define if the humanity remains and in what shape it remains. So I think climate change has been mentioned here many times. It's one of the big challenges we are up against. And if we don't do the right thing, we will not be able to do anything at the certain point anymore. So I do believe that the environmental issues are the issues that everyone should look at. And there will be also not any decent job in the planet that is completely ruined. But additionally, as, uh, as Christina was showing, for those, those of us who are working in Brussels specifically, but also on the national level, fighting for the different rights, fighting for environment, for social rights, for labor rights, we are really up against the big power. We may not realize that, the figures were quite telling, I think, that uh, Christina was showing, but we are really up against the huge power. And the power that has money has um, close contact with the top of the governments and has greed that will lead them to do anything and everything to get their way around. So I think we have, in many ways, we have common reasons to go together and to find together for things we find dear. And therefore, I do believe that building alliances is not only a smart thing, it's basically a necessity that we cannot uh, afford not to embark on. I start a little bit back with the first uh, uh, connections that we, we had with Uni Europa, and I, those of you who remember, I think, well, I guess everyone remembers 2007, and uh, the first sides of the financial crisis, and then that leading to economic crisis. I think it left the world changed from that moment on, and I think we are still bearing the results of that crisis. And the crisis, as we look at it, as we know, all know, the reason for it was really a very particular behavior of the financial sector. That sector allowing, allowed to be self-regulated and not being regulated, allowed to do all kinds of things that actually led to speculation without any oversight. And then our observation was that after the crisis, very quickly, the sector seemed to have forgotten that they were the ones who actually caused it. They seem to have go back and say, well, we will self-regulate. We know how to do it. We have all the know-how. We will uh, uh, do it better now. Just trust us. And I think we rightly, many of us rightly thought, it's not enough to trust the sector to self-regulate. We need to really put things there that will make sure that the sector is being regulated. And then the battle started on the EU level, the battle started with some, with the Commission trying to put some regulation and the industry, financial sector industry fighting against. 
So then many of us came with an idea, we do need to have a counteracting source, counteracting uh, actor there. That in that way, the finance watch came to being, which Oliver, I'm sure, uh, can tell you much more about, as he was in the board of finance watch, an NGO watching the regulatory system and, um, and uh, monitoring that the regulation is actually put in place and counteracting the, uh, counteracting the, the lobby of the financial sector. So in that first um, NGO that was created, we came together with Uni Europa, environmental groups, uh, some of the social groups, consumers, and we thought, actually, yes, we have the same goal and we need to work together because that's the only way how we can get some strength and then we can operate across the board. And I think that's another very important element that with the different actors, we can actually fill in much more with our limited resources than we would be able to do if we are just operating alone. So that was the beginning of what I call a, a, a very successful relationship between Friends of the Earth and UN Europa. Um, the second area that we came strongly together, and that's the area that Christina was uh, mentioning, is the Better Regulation Watchdog. The Better Regulation is an interesting narrative. It started maybe five, six years ago with the previous commission with talking about administrative burden. Administrative burden, everyone who needs to fill in a lot of papers because the EU requires them knows that that's something that people can imagine. It's, it's not a good thing, might be streamlined, might be uh, simplified. So that started with administrative burden. But then the narrative has changed. Then we started to, the Commission started to talk about fit for purpose. The legislation need to be fit for purpose. It's very unclear who sets up what the purpose is and who says what does it mean to be fit for purpose. If it was up to us, the purpose is to really benefit people and the environment. But when we see how the Commission interprets it, very much the purpose is to fit the big players so that they can have more profit. So again, it's very important to be aware who defines what's the fit and what's the purpose. But then the uh, narrative changed even further because now we are talking about the regulatory burden. And I think those of you who, uh, who look more deeply into it, you, you realize that that's fraud by default because that assumes that regulation is a burden Regulation is not there to protect the environment, people, workers, uh, our social rights. No, it's a burden that needs to be reduced. And we are getting to the level that now the Commission is even supposed to set up targets to reduce the regulatory burden. So you imagine, you have a regulation, you have some uh, legislation that protects I stay on the environmental side, the environment. And then someone says, well, this year we need to have a target of 10% reduction. So we are going to cut 10% of the legislation. We are going to look for the legislation that is maybe not so important. We will always find it. But at the end, as we experience now, because of the heavy lobby in Brussels, usually the re legislation that is put forward to be cut is the legislation that is very important for our cause, for so social agenda, for labor agenda, for um, environmental agenda. And just to give you an anecdote, which well would be funny if it wasn't so sad at the end. In November 2014, the Business Europe, which is the, the biggest association of uh, industry and trade, uh, or business on, uh, association in Brussels, sent a letter to uh, President Juncker suggesting to him what legislation should be scrapped and what legislation should be heavily improved, as they say. On that, on that list, on that hit list, there was a circular economy package, the one that is men mentioned now in your motion, that it's very crucial for us actually to be a sustainable economy. And that legislation, the proposal from the previous commission, was scrapped. 
But on that hit list was also um, the maternity directive, which probably is very relevant for, for uh, this audience, but also the gender balance in the corporate boards proposal. And I really, I, I did it as a night reading. I do that sometimes to myself. I go somewhere traveling and then I take to bed uh, all kinds of interesting papers. I happen to take the letter from, uh, the leaked letter from Business Europe for my night reading. And uh, I really enjoyed that one. So they, the Business Europe wanted to scrap the uh, gender balance in uh, boards proposal because they argued that the proposal does not take into account the way corporate boards function and are renewed. Indeed, the whole purpose of the legislation was to actually change the way how the corporate boards function and they are renewed because they are fully boys clubs and renewed to remain boys clubs. So I was reading that and thinking how much guts you need to have to write that in a letter to president of the commission and to basically say, you scrap that legislation because we like it as it is. We like it to be a boys club and we want to keep it that way. And that's what Business Europe is doing and we are really up against. And I do believe that the only way how we can counteract their powers is by working together. So we did come together again and set up a better regulation watchdog. And I would like to also congratulate you very much with, with this campaign. I think it, it says it all. And it's, uh, it's brilliant that Uni Europa is doing campaigning now. And I think my organization is a campaigning organization. So I hope that we can exchange our tactics and, and work together. And as I said, unfortunately, quite some legislation which was on the hit list of the uh, Business Europe is now up for refit, for uh, fitness check, and may be scrapped or may be improved in a way that actually means less protection um, and less uh, um, safeguards for what we believe is necessary. Another interesting connecting point that I found uh, working with Uni Europa, but also in your motions, is the work on the trade issues and the, uh, the negotiations with the US currently, but also with Canada and specifically the investor state dispute settlement, which is, we believe, a mechanism that will put a complete chilling effect on any new regulation and may also impact the regulation that we are, legislation we are having now. So I'm very happy to find so many of these connecting points in uh, the work we do together and also in your motions. I think the environmental sustainability, the climate issue that comes prominently in your work, the circular economy, trade, these are all points that we can connect. And my organization, Friends of the Earth, have, has always been an organization arguing that the jobs need to be decent jobs, that we are not for any precarious employment because this is not the world we want to live in. So I think on that side, we are very mindful of the agenda that Uni Europa and trade unions have, and we are very much on your side as well. So I see a lot of good reasons for cooperation, and uh, I think that we can change Europe together by also growing strategic alliances with environmental groups, with social groups, with consumers, women's organizations. So if I can be a little bit provocative, I know that you uh, just closed the, the fora for any comments on your motions, but maybe for the next uh, meeting that you have, your next conference, if I can plead that you also have a no motion on growing Europe together by growing strategic alliances, beyond the trade unions, beyond Uni Europa. I think I would be very happy to be part of building that motion and building that strategic alliances. I really hope that uh, we work together further in Brussels, but also on the national level. And I hope for that because I believe that with all we are up, uh, up against, it's not only a smart thing, it's the only thing one can do. Thank you very much. Thank you.